the pistol I was using was small like this. I'm sure it was more or less this size, but shorter, but it, it doesn't look like that. Why not? It's a revolver, and, and, and it was Number a small five. pistol. Doesn't look familiar. It was even smaller than that one. Shorter than... Shorter. And it was a pistol. I think so, yes. That's how I remember it. Exhibit number six. Like that, but the color is wrong, sir. Okay. So, of the four firearms, the handguns found at the premises at Monsana, you can you are only able to identify exhibit number three. The yes. The three special. Yes. So one you used to sh to shot. Uh, Mr. McGregor with, according to you, is not there? According to me, not there, sir. And you would recall, you yesterday also testified that the Roo shot himself. I'm aware of it, yes. Are you able to tell the court with which firearm did he shoot himself? With that pistol, according to me. The same but one which is missing now? Yes. Are you able to tell the court under what circumstances did he shoot himself? I wasn't there, but I had to take him across the street to the hospital, so he explained to me he wanted to clean it and it fell, and um, he shot himself in his leg, high up in his thigh, I think you called it. And was that a serious wound? How long did he stay in hospital? I'm not sure about a week, between three days and a week. Um, he, we were worried because it was um, apparently it split open the, the pieces. One of them could have gone to his spine or some of his nerves. But um, he wasn't going to die. We were scared he was going to die, but he wasn't going to die, they said. Did the doctor decide to operate on you or not? No, they took x-rays and decided it was necessary. So he was left with a bu bullet inside it? That's correct. Now, you also testified yesterday with reference to the tattoos, and you mentioned the sword on your back. On, is that correct? That's correct. On each side of the sword, there's also symbols or also pictures. Can you describe them to the court, please? Sure. Um, on the right-hand side, I have a small dragon that is lying on a stone, but the stone was never tattooed, but it's lying. You can see he's lying down, a baby dragon. And on the left-hand side, I have um, a skull with a cap on and long teeth. And at, underneath the sword, I have a tattoo that says Bloodboard. Bloodboard. Now, what is the meaning or the symbolism of the skull? I'm not sure if, the, if, if I ever thought about the symbolism of it. I like the look of it. I also wanted a skull somewhere on my body because I like a skull tattoo. And it was a nice place to put a nice big one. So it had nothing to do with death? No, I wouldn't want to carry something on me that would maybe cause my death or symbolize that. And the, the small dragon on the other side? The meaning? Or why did you put the dragon there? Because I've watched movies like Neverland where there are dragons and they are very cute. Now, especially the, 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 the skull picture on your back, how do you reconcile that with your belief as a Christian? In what sense do you mean, sir? Well, to me it doesn't gel for a Christian to have skulls and dragons on their body. Well, most Christians don't even want to have tattoos, sir, so, so it depends on how you see tattoos. For me, the tattoos I have on my body, all of them are things that are here in the world, and we all have skulls, and we eventually will die. Then you will see you have a skull, but I mean, it, for me it doesn't symbolize anything evil. 
And the dragon is a baby dragon and it's really cute. It's, it doesn't look like an evil dragon with horns or anything, so that's why I chose it. <laughs> you also mentioned yesterday during your testimony that uh, you became a Christian in, in the jail, is that correct? I became a Christian before, but I uh, <sighs> repented and, and reconciled with God, I think is the correct word, again, in jail, yes. So, would you regard yourself as a Christian during the killing spree in 2012? A lapsed one, yes. You can be God's child and be a naughty child, or you can be a good one. They, I've noticed in your diary, which I was handed in yesterday, uh, you made a reference to Kokos. Kokos and uh, Akadissa. What are those? People that I consider bad. It's not demons? Um, sir, I can't see in the spirit, so why would I refer to demons? It's, a, it's a, just a, another name for a demon, a hoho. Isn't that what it was? Uh, we even, even where I am now in Jao, refer to people that are really, really troublemakers as hohos. Um, it depends on your language that you use. That's what I use. You also mentioned yes. How other people see you? In jail, the way that I am now. Yes. They don't normally believe that I'm there for murder, sir. Thank you, my lord. You also uh, mentioned when you were going through your tattoos, on the one hand, there, on one of your fingers, you mentioned John. That's correct. Which finger is that? Which hand? This one. Right hand? Right hand ring finger. And it's the name that you did? No, just the initials JM. JM. And J stands for John and the M? Michael. John Michael. That's correct. What's his surname? Maverick. Maverick? Yes. Where did you meet him? I met how him. did you meet him first? I met him at the school where I taught when he came to see someone and pick someone up at the school the first time. But I've known him from when I was at university. Um, we know, knew about each other, but I never were actually introduced to him then. He was the same age. And you had a relationship with him? That's correct. Until when? Until he was deceased in 2009. 2009. So he wasn't introduced to you by Cecilia at all? No, sir. Now I want you to have a look at exhibit two times you in front of you there, volume two. Yes, sir. Volume two, exhibit two times you for uniform. I have it. 